The world of crime is like dominoes. You topple one and the rest follows. That's precisely what happened with Paul O'Brien. A shadowy figure, elusive and clever, but as the web began to fray, he was thrust into the spotlight. The fall of his most trusted enterprise exposed the secret life he led, unravelling everything he believed was secure. Suddenly, the quiet yet happening world he had lived in was gone, and there was no turning back. What happened to him, and how did he find himself in this situation? On the surface, Paul O'Brien appeared just another face in the crowd of London, but beneath that ordinary facade was a life interwoven with the threads of the criminal underworld. At 57, O'Brien had spent years carefully navigating the criminal landscape, making connections that would eventually lead him into a partnership with a savvy criminal who had links to other European gangs, including the Kinnahans. But surely, to be in the company of the Kinnahans, you couldn't just be any ordinary criminal. This man was none other than Thomas Maher, who the National Crime Agency described as the logistics man for a number of crime groups. Yes, while today's focus is on O'Brien, his story is incomplete without first delving into the tale of Thomas Maher. Maher, hiding behind the mask of a legitimate businessman, orchestrated the elaborate operation, moving staggering quantities of coke across Europe. He wasn't just another criminal, he was someone who had connections with some of the most powerful narcotic cartels in the world, including those in Colombia. O'Brien, seasoned in the game, became an invaluable partner in Mayer's empire. While Mayer led a life of bling, the same cannot be said of O'Brien. However, O'Brien didn't have meagre subsidence either. Investigation, the detail of which we will discuss later, found €300,000 in cash linked to O'Brien. And of course, that's not the only stash that was under the criminal's name. Despite O'Brien's knack for staying under the radar, he couldn't remain invisible forever. His ties to Mayer meant that he was never too far away from the spotlight, especially as law enforcement agencies began to close in on the network they had built. The criminal enterprise that Mayer speedheaded and that O'Brien supported was one that would eventually attract the attention of authorities across Europe. On the surface, he was a successful trucking boss living a seemingly modest life in Warrington, a town in Cheshire. His home, though unassuming, often had luxury cars parked in the driveway, a Range Rover, a sleek black Mercedes GLS, a BMW, and even a £70,000 imported Corvette. Inside the trappings of wealth were evident. High-end watches, including Rolexes and Hublots, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, and expensive artwork, including a world map made from bullets. To those who knew him casually, Mayer appeared to be an ordinary man who'd worked hard on his business, but this was only one side of Thomas Mayer's life. Behind this facade, Mayer was deeply entrenched in the world of organised crime, serving as a key figure in a large-scale narcotic trafficking network that spanned across Europe. His trucking business, which appeared legitimate on the surface, was the perfect cover for his illicit activities. While his trucks transported everyday goods, they also carried something far more lucrative, coke. Mayer's role in this network was that of a professional facilitator, someone who could be trusted to arrange the transportation of narcotics across borders with precision and discretion. Mayer's operations were vast and complex, involving the movement of hundreds of kilograms of coke, often sourced from Colombian cartels. The illicit product would be transported from places like the Netherlands and Spain, making their way across the UK and to Ireland, where they would be further distributed. Mayer's success in the criminal world allowed him to live a life that few could imagine. Although his home in Warrington was modest by appearance, the wealth he accumulated through his illegal activities was anything but. His penchant for luxury extended beyond just cars and watches. He spent lavishly on holidays, frequently travelling to exotic destinations like Dubai, Mexico and New York. On these trips, Mayer spared no expense, he always flew business or first class, and in New York, he even hired a private helicopter. In Dubai, he purchased gold ingots and expensive artwork, further adding to his collection of luxury items. Over a span of just a few years, Mayer spent £70,000 on holidays alone, a sum that far exceeded the means of an average trucking business owner. But Mayer's wealth wasn't just about personal indulgence. It also served as a practical purpose in maintaining his criminal network. 
He facilitated the movement of large sums of cash, often charging a commission for his services. This money, much like the products he trafficked, moved across borders with a level of secrecy that only someone with Mayer's skills could manage. His network was extensive, with contacts in multiple countries, and his influence was felt far and wide. Mayer's fate took a dark turn with the grim discovery of 39 Vietnamese nationals who tragically suffocated in a lorry in Essex in October 2019. The tractor unit involved in this horrific incident had once been owned by Mayer, and although he wasn't charged in connection with the deaths, this event placed him on the radar of the National Crime Agency. The subsequent investigation into Mayer's activities revealed a man living far beyond his declared means, triggering a deeper probe into his finances and operations. As the NCA dug deeper, they uncovered more about Mayer's double life. His name was linked to multiple criminal enterprises, and his wealth, previously thought to be the result of legitimate business, was now clearly tied to illegal activities. Mayer had been careful, but not careful enough. The scale of his operations, combined with the attention brought on by the Essex incident, made it increasingly difficult for him to remain under the radar. The critical blow to Mayer's operation came with the hacking of EncroChat, an encrypted communication network used by criminals across Europe. Like many in the criminal underworld, Mayer believed in EncroChat's impenetrable fortress, a sanctuary where his illicit dealings could go unnoticed. He used this network under the handles Satirical and later Snacker, discussing everything from narcotic shipments to the movement of cash. Presumably his username Snacker was linked to his habit of having takeaways delivered to his door on lockdown. Nevertheless, in one message, Mayer bragged about his 20 years in the illicit trade, confident that his communications were secure. Little did he know that his message was part of the incriminating evidence that led to his downfall. But in 2020, French and Dutch law enforcement agencies managed to infiltrate the EncroChat network, effectively pulling the curtain back on Mayer's and many other criminals' secret worlds. The information gathered from this hack was a treasure trove for investigators. It revealed the inner workings of Mayer's operations, his connections with major cartels, and the vast network he had built to facilitate the movement of narcotics and money across Europe. The evidence was overwhelming. As the details of Mayer's activities came to light, it became clear just how deeply he was embedded into the criminal underworld. He wasn't just a trucking boss who had turned to crime. He was a central figure in vast operations that stretched across multiple countries. The narcotics he moved were worth millions, and the risks he took were enormous. But for Mayer, the rewards had always outweighed the risks. Until now. In June 2020, Mayer was arrested at his home in Warrington, marking the beginnings of the end for his criminal empire. He was charged with importing Class A narcotics and money laundering. In December 2020, he was sentenced to 14 years and 8 months in prison. But even behind bar, Mayer's story wasn't over. In May 2023, he was brought back to Liverpool Crown Court for a Proceeds of Crime Act hearing. The court ordered him to pay back nearly £630,000, a sum that included his home, cars, lorries, jewellery and other assets. The failure to pay up this amount within three months would warrant an additional six years in prison. Thomas Mayer's double life shows us the length to which some criminals will go in pursuit of wealth and power. His story, hidden behind the ordinary facade of a trucking boss, was one of ambition, greed and ultimately downfall. For years he had managed to balance his two lives, but in the end, the weight of his criminal activities became too great to bear. The man who had once believed himself untouchable was brought down by the very tools he had relied on to protect himself, leaving behind a legacy of crime and consequences that would echo long after his arrest. But what made his downfall possible? The remarkable interception of EncroChat by law enforcement agencies. EncroChat was the secret lifeline to Europe's organised crime networks, a sophisticated, encrypted communication platform that promised its users absolute security. For years, it served as the backbone of countless criminal operations, facilitating everything from narcotic trafficking to money laundering and even more violent crimes. The platform was marketed as a safe haven where messages could be sent and received without the prying eyes of law enforcement. It was a service that boasted total anonymity, encryption so advanced that it was believed to be uncrackable. For criminals like Mayer, EncroChat was the key to operating on a global scale without leaving a trace. The users of EncroChat were a who's who of the criminal elite. For a hefty price, they purchased specialised devices, 
typically modified Android phones, that were stripped of all features except for secure messaging. These devices, which cost upward of £1,300 for a six-month subscription, were equipped with military-grade encryption. They also included a panic wipe function, allowing users to delete all data instantly if they feared capture. The EncroChat service was the perfect tool for those who needed to communicate in secret, and it quickly became the preferred method of communication for organised crime syndicates across Europe. For years, this system operated flawlessly, or so it seemed. Criminals spoke freely, discussing everything from narcotic shipments to assassinations, all under the assumption that their conversations were invisible to law enforcement. EncroChat became synonymous with the underworld, its users confident that their secrets were safe. The network's success lay in the illusion of invulnerability, an illusion that would soon be shattered. This came on April 2020, when the criminals woke up from their pleasant dream. Reality hit them hard that their secure world wasn't secure after all. The law enforcement agencies in France and the Netherlands had managed to do what was thought impossible. They cracked EncroChat. It was a monumental achievement, the result of years of painstaking work with cybersecurity experts and police investigators. The French gendarmerie, with their assistance from Europol, had infiltrated the EncroChat servers located in Roubaix, northern France. By exploiting vulnerabilities in the system, they gained access to the live stream of every message sent and received on the platform. Once inside, law enforcement launched what could only be described as one of the most significant operations against organised crime in history. They began by sending bogus updates to EncroChat devices, which allowed them to collect and decrypt messages in real time. What they uncovered was beyond anything they had anticipated. The scale of criminal activity was staggering. Over 50,000 users were exposed, with 9,000 of them based in the UK alone. The message detailed narcotic deals, money laundering operations, plan for violent crimes, and much more. The veil of secrecy had been lifted, and with it, the downfall of countless criminals began. Operation Venetic, as it was named in the UK, was the British response to the EncroChat hack. Led by the National Crime Agency, it quickly became the most extensive operation of its kind in the country's history. Over 1,000 arrests were made within months of the hack, with more than £54 million in cash, 77 firearms and two tonnes of narcotics seized in the first wave of investigations. But this was just the beginning. The data retrieved from EncroChat provided a treasure trove of evidence, allowing law enforcement to build airtight cases against some of the most dangerous criminals in Europe. You can see a glimpse of the impact EncroChat hack created here. Here's what Executive Director of Europol had to say on the matter. Being there for, for two and a half months, being an insider in organized crime will give us a better understanding of the developments of the routes of the, the hotspots. And the role of Europol now is to make sure that uh, in this massive amount of information in which there is all kinds of criminal activities on, on, on coke travel, but also on killings, on violence, on rib deals, that we um, get the right information out of there and, and deliver it uh, with uh, the judicial accordance towards uh, those member states and those third parties or other states outside of the European Union. Thomas Mayer was among those who fell as a result of Operation Venetic. His belief in the invincibility of EncroChat had led him to conduct his business without caution. The messages retrieved from his devices were incriminating, detailing the logistics of narcotic shipments, money movements and his dealing with criminal associates. Mayer had communicated freely discussing everything from his 20-year career in the narcotic trade to his methods for evading detection. His confidence in EncroChat had been his undoing. But Mayer was not alone. The EncroChat hack exposed a vast network of criminals, each operating with the same false sense of security. As investigators sifted through the data, they uncovered connections between individuals who had previously been untouchable. The network's downfall was swift and devastating, as one by one, these criminals were rounded up, their secrets laid bare for the world to see. 
Paul O'Brien, who had worked alongside Mayer, was also caught in the web that EncroChat had spun. While his role would be explored further, the information revealed through EncroChat painted a picture of a man who had been deeply involved in the same network that Mayer had navigated. The takedown of EncroChat didn't just expose Mayer's operations, it laid the groundwork for a broader investigation that would eventually lead to the arrest and conviction of many more, including O'Brien. EncroChat's fall was a game-changer for law enforcement across Europe. It not only provided concrete evidence against countless criminals, but also served as a powerful deterrent. The message was clear. No one was untouchable. The tools that criminals had relied on to protect their secrets were now in the hands of their pursuers. The once invincible communication network had become the very instrument of their downfall. A testament to the relentless pursuit of justice by those who refused to let crime go unchecked. This was the biggest operation that the Metropolitan Police Service has ever conducted in terms of organised crime here in London. Uh, we've made over 900 arrests, uh, we've convicted 426 uh, individuals uh, and, uh, for total imprisonment of 3,722 years. That's an average of eight and a half years per, per conviction. You know, these are significant criminals. Uh, these are people who have been operating at the highest echelon of criminality here in, in London. Uh, and we, we're obviously really, really pleased to, um, to announce these results today. The takedown of EncroChat sent shockwaves through the underworld, unravelling a web of criminal activity that had been meticulously hidden from law enforcement for years. Among those who felt the full force of this operation was Thomas Mayer, a man who had built his life on secrecy and deception. Mayer's arrest marked the beginning of the end for a criminal empire that had operated with impunity, and his downfall was a pivotal moment in the larger narrative of Operation Venetic. Mayer's arrest in June 2020 was a carefully coordinated effort by the National Crime Agency. By this point, the evidence against him was overwhelming. The messages retrieved from his EncroChat device painted a damning picture of his involvement in narcotic trafficking and money laundering on a massive scale. For years, Mayer had used his trucking business as a front for his criminal activities, moving vast quantities of coke across Europe and funneling the proceeds back into the network. His confidence in the security of EncroChat had led him to conduct these activities with little regard for the possibility of detection. When NCA officers arrived at Mayer's home in Warrington, they found a man who was finally beginning to grasp the full extent of the trouble he was in. The luxury cars parked in the driveway, the expensive watches and the art inside the house, all of it was a testament to the wealth he had accumulated through his crimes. But now, all of it was evidence. Mayer was arrested and charged with importing Class A narcotics and money laundering, crimes that carried severe penalties. His arrest was a major victory for the NCA, but it was also just the beginning of unravelling his network. The investigation into Mayer's activities revealed the true scale of his operations. He had been moving narcotics across Europe for years, working closely with some of the most powerful narcotic cartels in the world. His connections were vast and his influence was significant. But the evidence from EncroChat left no room for doubt. Mayer had been caught and there was no escape. In December 2020, Mayer was sentenced to 14 years and eight months in prison. The sentence was a reflection of the seriousness of his crimes and the role he had played in facilitating the movement of narcotics across borders. But for Mayer, the punishment didn't end there. In May 2023, he was brought back to Liverpool Crown Court for a Proceeds of Crime Act hearing. The court ordered him to pay back nearly £630,000, a sum that included his home, cars, lorries, jewellery and other assets. If he fails to pay this amount within three months, he faces an additional six years in prison. Mayer's fall from grace was complete. The man who had once operated with impunity was now facing the full weight of the law. O'Brien's introduction into the police radar came through his association with Mayer and the broader network that EncroChat had exposed. Like many others, O'Brien had used the platform to conduct his business, believing that his communications were secure. But as the messages began to be decrypted and analysed, O'Brien's name started to appear more and more frequently. He wasn't just a peripheral figure, he was deeply involved in the operations 
that were now under intense scrutiny by law enforcement. The Met Police started investigating the West London-based gang led by O'Brien and Lee Mortimer in 2020. The police officers conducted surveillance on one of the gang members, which led to the interception of our narcotics exchange between O'Brien and Mortimer and other members of the gang. O'Brien was using the handle One Diamond G and was texting another criminal about arrangements for transporting coke and 900,000 euro in cash. Now, guess who that other criminal was? It was Mayer himself. Conversations between the pair showed that in April 2020, an HGV and a car met near the village of Udal in the Netherlands to conduct the narcotic exchange, which could have been worth up to £1 million if sold in the UK, according to the NCA. Mayer organised for €300,000 belonging to O'Brien to be collected near Louth in Ireland and transported to the Netherlands by car before a second pickup of €600,000 was arranged by Mayer for O'Brien, again to be taken by couriers from Ireland to the Netherlands. The exchange took place at a bus station in Drogheda, before Garda officers conducting a surveillance operation moved in to intercept the cash and arrest couriers Jason Reed, Thomas Rooney and Catherine Dawson. This interception proved to be the first link that came off the network's chain and caused its dismantling. A series of arrests followed accompanying seizures of over 160 kilograms of coke, as well as over one million pounds in cash and other high value assets, including vehicles and jewelry. Not only this, but it also enabled the officers to identify members of another narcotic gang operating in Greater Manchester, headed by Jonathan Stroglios. The network's EncroChat messages showed they imported more than 8.5 tons of coke between 2017 and 2020, valued at more than 1.2 billion euros. O'Brien's gang members were identified and sentenced between 2020 and 2023. These members included Paul O'Brien, who was sentenced to 21 years imprisonment for conspiracy to import coke and smack. Lee Mortimer was sentenced to 18 years imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke and for money laundering. Marcus Elmer was sentenced to 15 and a half years imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke and for money laundering. Jonathan Whiteley was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke and for money laundering. Anthony Sheehan was sentenced to four years imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke. Marcin Jadas was sentenced to 16 years imprisonment for conspiring to import coke and smack into the UK. Jonathan Stroglios was sentenced to 31 years imprisonment for conspiring to import and supply coke. Matthew Parsons was sentenced to 29 years imprisonment for conspiracy to supply and import coke. Paul Shaw was sentenced to 17 years and nine months imprisonment for conspiracy to supply and import coke. Liam Cherrick was sentenced to nine years and two months imprisonment for being concerned in the supply of coke. John Maguire was sentenced to 16 years and 11 months imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke. Ross Maguire was sentenced to seven years and seven months imprisonment for conspiracy to supply coke. The sentencing of these men marked a significant victory for the NCA and law enforcement agencies across Europe. It was a clear demonstration that even the most sophisticated criminal networks could be brought down with the right tools and determination. The EncroChat hack had provided the evidence needed to dismantle a network that had operated with impunity for years and the convictions of O'Brien, Mayer and their associates were as a testament to the power of collaboration and persistence in the fight against organised crime. But beyond the legal victories, the arrest and sentencing of these men also offered a sobering insight into the nature of modern organised crime. The use of technology like EncroChat had allowed these criminals to operate on a scale that would have been unimaginable just a few decades earlier. It was a reminder that as law enforcement evolves, so do the methods of those they pursue. The takedown of EncroChat was a major success, but it also highlighted the ongoing challenges of staying ahead in the game, where the stakes are incredibly high and the players are constantly adapting. The downfall of Mayer and O'Brien, along with the other members of their network, serves as a cautionary tale. It's a story of how even the most carefully guarded secrets can eventually come to light, and how those who operate in the shadows must always be aware that the darkness may one day be pierced by the light of justice. 
For Mayor and O'Brien, the consequences were severe. A life behind bars, stripped of the wealth and power they had worked so hard to accumulate. And for those who remain in the criminal underworld, it's a stark reminder that no matter how secure they believe themselves to be, there's always the possibility that their time will come. The Encro Chat takedown marked a significant turning point in the battle against organised crime, demonstrating that even the most sophisticated criminal networks can be brought down. The scale and success of Operation Venetic sent a powerful message to criminals across Europe. The police were no longer just catching up, they were winning. The operation was not just a triumph of technology, but also a testament to the persistence and collaboration of law enforcement agencies determined to dismantle the structures of organised crime. One of the most impactful aspects of the Encro Chat takedown was its scope. The operation led to thousands of arrests in the UK alone, with significant quantities of narcotics, cash and weapons seized. The ripple effects were felt far beyond the borders of the UK, as the network had connections across Europe and beyond. Criminals who had operated with impunity for years were suddenly facing justice, their activities laid bare by the very tools they believed that would protect them. Greater Manchester Police's Operation Foam, a local operation of the broader EncroChat investigation, was a stark example of how deep the impact was. In just the first six months, police seized £1.7 million in cash, 15 kilos of coke, 2 kilos of smack, 70 kilos of amphetamines and half a million ecstasy tablets. But these numbers only scratched the surface. The data extracted from EncroChat provided investigators with the evidence they needed to build cases against some of the region's most dangerous criminals, resulting in the arrest of over 200 suspects. Among those brought to justice were high-profile figures like Ibrahim Abdullah, who used the handle Tender Pasta to import coke worth £1.6 million, and Nathan Loftus, known as Big M9, who was jailed for 22 years for his involvement in importing huge amounts of smack and coke into the UK. The significance of these arrests cannot be overstated. For years, criminals like Abdullah and Loftus had operated with a sense of invulnerability, confident that their communications were beyond the reach of law enforcement. The takedown of EncroChat shattered this illusion, revealing the intricate networks that allowed these individuals to thrive. The police, once seen as a step behind, were now firmly in control using the very technology that criminals had relied on to bring them down. The impact of these criminal activities on communities cannot be ignored. Organised crime, particularly narcotic trafficking, has a devastating effect on society. It fuels addiction, drives violence and creates an environment of fear and instability. Communities across the UK have long suffered from the consequences of these criminal enterprises. The narcotics that were trafficked by figures like Mayer and O'Brien didn't just disappear, they ended up on the street, causing untold harm to individuals and families. Detective Chief Superintendent Ella Marriott, head of the London Regional Organised Crime Unit, reflected on the broader implications of these criminal activities. This is an investigation that demonstrates how Met officers are going above and beyond to make London safe by removing narcotic dealers from the capital and other parts of the UK. This is community crime fighting at its best, removing offenders who impact the lives of those around them. We've seen time and time again that the supply of narcotics has devastating consequences on communities. It causes addiction, has devastating health impacts and leads to antisocial behaviour and violence. That's why we are determined to crack down on narcotics and the gangs that exploit vulnerable people, while also working with partners to support narcotic users through addiction. This investigation should serve as a message to criminals and gang members bringing narcotics onto our streets. We will come after you and we will bring you to justice. Her words underscore the dual approach needed to combat organised crime effectively. It's not just about arresting criminals, but also about addressing the root causes of the issues that these crimes create. The police's success in taking down networks like the one exposed by EncroChat is a crucial step, but it's also a reminder of the ongoing work needed to heal the communities affected by these crimes. The financial impact of organised crime is another significant factor. The vast sums of money generated by narcotic trafficking don't just disappear, they are laundered, reinvested and used to further entrench criminal enterprises. This money funds more crime, perpetuating a cycle of violence and corruption. The Proceeds of Crime Act, 
used to strip criminals like Thomas Mayer of their ill-gotten gains, is a critical tool in breaking this cycle. By seizing assets and returning the money to the public purse, law enforcement can disrupt the financial power of these networks and prevent them from rebuilding. Rob Burgess, the NCA's head of asset denial, highlighted the importance of this aspect in the fight against organised crime. This significant result demonstrates the agency's ability to recover criminal assets and prevent criminals from benefiting from their wrongdoing. The confiscation order will ensure money made through criminal activity will be returned to the public purse to fund further efforts to protect the public from organised crime. This approach not only punishes the criminals, but also sends a clear message to others. Crime doesn't pay. The loss of wealth, combined with lengthy prison sentences, serves as a powerful deterrent. The authorities are not just interested in putting criminals behind bars, they are determined to dismantle their entire operations, leaving them with nothing to rebuild with once they are released. The success of the EncroChat operation has also fostered a new sense of confidence and determination within law enforcement. The collaborative effort between agencies across Europe, combined with cutting-edge technology, has shown what is possible when the right resources are brought to bear. The criminals who once felt untouchable are now looking over their shoulders, aware that their activities are no longer hidden from view. The impact of Operation Benetic and the subsequent operations like Foam is profound. It has led to safer communities where the presence of organised crime is significantly diminished. The reduction in narcotics available on the streets, the disruption of violent gangs and the seizure of illegal firearms have all contributed to safer environments for the public. But while the success of these operations is undeniable, they also highlight the ongoing challenges in the fight against organised crime. Criminals are constantly adapting, finding new ways to avoid detection and continue their activities. The victory over EncroChat is significant, but it's also a reminder that the battle is far from over. Law enforcement must continue to innovate, to stay ahead of those who seek to undermine the safety and security of society. In the words of NCA branch commander Martin Clark, the criminal network was international in its scope, with connections to narcotic suppliers across the globe. Our work with the Met has resulted in significant custodial sentences for the gang's members and demonstrates our commitment to do all we can with our law enforcement partners to protect the public by targeting the organised criminal networks causing most harm to the UK. These reflections from key figures in the investigation emphasise the gravity of the threat posed by organised crime and the importance of the victories won through operations like Benetic. The police are indeed winning, but it's a victory that requires constant vigilance, collaboration and an unwavering commitment to justice. The takedown of EncroChat and the resulting arrests stand as a testament to the relentless pursuit of justice, showcasing the power of innovation in the fight against crime. The message is clear. No matter how sophisticated the methods of criminals may become, law enforcement will continue to evolve, adapt and ultimately prevail in the pursuit of a safer society.